Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Kardec Radio, where we're here to nourish our souls. I am Nora Brazil, and the host of this program, Soothing Pairs of Trust, based off the book Pairs of Trust, right? To the collaboration of Dr. Diaz de Cruz and through. Uh, Andre Moreira. So we thank them so, so, so much. Thank you so much, guys, for doing this for us because it's a really transformational book. There's so much in here, right? It's on us to do the work, to discipline ourselves, right? And just get it done. Just do it. Get up and go, right? Because that's what the Lord wants us to have an amazing experience here in life. Even though we have all these trials and these tribulations, we are children of God. And so that's a beautiful gift that he gave to us to really enjoy it. And so when we have books like this that help us, that give us tips, it's really to help us along the way to pick up resources for us to continue on this journey. All right, friends, let's say a quick prayer before we get to our lesson today. Dear Mother, Father, God, thank you so much for this opportunity for today. Thank you for your presence, for your love, for your mercy. We are so grateful just for being here, for being us, for being created, for being loved. Thank you for allowing us this space as we make it our own safe space, Father. We ask permission from everyone, Father and Spirit, so that we may begin this meeting and we have the inspiration so that we may receive the message or messages just the way we need them. And so be it. All right. So let me share the slides with you. All right, dear friends. So today we're going to study chapter nine, sustenance from on high. Right. This is beautiful. We, we, We always think that, you know, sometimes we're not being supported depending on how strong um, the problem or tribulation is, right? Sometimes we feel lonely, we get desperate, and we just don't know what to do. And so this chapter is really reminding us sometimes just simply just stop. (laughs) Stop what you're doing and just take a deep breath and remember, There is someone there for us. It's always looking out for us, for our best interest, right? We just have to trust this. We just have to believe it, embrace it in our hearts, I think, and and move forward with this idea in our hearts, uh, knowing that the Most High, right? Uh, Mother, Father, God, (laughs) whatever you uh, connect to with the source is really taking care of everything. So this is a beautiful program today. Um, And we are actually going to talk about Job because what better um, story in the Bible than Job's story, right? Where we see how he had that sustenance from high. He had that support. He had God and friends along the way. Everything that he needed while he was going through this trial. So uh, we started school this week, so I am already like teacher mode. Let's do a T-chart. Um, and so on one side of the screen, we are going to have what is found in the book, Pills of Trust. And then on the other side, we're going to have uh, something that supports, right, uh, what we're saying and then they both, on the other side. So they both go hand in hand. And pardon me, I don't mean to... Um, confuse anyone but i think as we keep going along the lesson um you will see that connection because i know i have a lot of stuff on the screen friends but um it will make sense i promise all right so let's go ahead and start um the book pills of trust it begins with on earth each incarnated heart receives blessings for personal personal growth we are watched over by elevated hearts whom the most high has entrusted for your protection your support and as sources of continuous love for the success of your ventures, right? So it's interesting here when he says blessings for personal growth. It really um, 
reminds us we need to expand our understanding, our real understanding of personal growth. Because a lot of the times we have this materialistic view of personal growth. We think, you know, oh, it's about having this or having that. But in actuality, it's not about that. Personal growth is the growth that happens inside, right? Staying there. And we all know that for that to happen, we're going to have to go through some difficulties, right? But once we cross over, that's when we start to, to learn. Or how else are we going to learn, right? We start to appreciate. But let's turn around on the other side and see, well, um, yes, you're going to go through this, but we have protection. We have love. We have support. And in the story of Job in the Bible, you know, um, he was a righteous man. He was great, you know, he was a servant of God. And this is the way the story goes in the Bible, right? With Lord and Satan, they were talking to each other. And so this is how it ends. The Lord said to Satan, this is Job 1 verse 12. Very well then, everything he has is in your power. But on the man himself, you do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Wow. This is such a powerful statement coming from God, right? He's saying, you know what? And Satan is representing like the negative forces, friends, right? Uh, or that dark side or that problem, that challenge where the sustenance from on high may say, you know what? You're going to take everything. But that person inside, you don't. That's God's love for you and I. It's not beautiful. And so that's where we know through this dialogue that Jesus, I mean, the Lord was having, right, with, with Satan and the dark forces. We know that we are taken care of. And we know what was so powerful here. Then Satan went away, went out from the presence of the Lord. So you see how this darkness is very little compared to this presence. It's nothing. It's just something that's going to make us grow. And then uh, Dr. Diaz de Cruz continues, each spirit chooses what is best for it. It attracts itself to spiritual company with which it is compatible. The spirit harnesses within its surroundings either an atmosphere of peace or intoxication according to what it cultivates in its heart. Oh my Lord, there's a lot here. The bottom line is that Dr. Diaz de Cruz is reminding us, you know, we choose what is for us, and most importantly, what we emanate, what we attract, that is what's around us, right? Coming from cultivating it from the heart. Again, it's not the exterior or it's not the outer things, right? It's the interior stuff. It's the stuff inside. It's the stuff we work, especially up here on ourselves, so that when we bring it out, it's like a light. And so it's interesting to put this into perspective because now let's look at Job. When Job was having such a difficult time, right? When everything was taken away, it really came down to one thing, right? His faith in God, what he was creating through his thoughts. And because of that commitment to the Lord, he had friends who come over. It says Job uh, chapter 2, verse 11 through, I believe, 13. When Job's three friends uh, heard about all the troubles that had come up upon him, they set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep out loud and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven days nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Wow. So there is so much here, friends. Notice what they did. They just sat with him. They just kind of like he's in that pain. Let's just feel it with him. They didn't go there to scorn him or to say, you know what? No. It was a seven days and seven nights. Can you imagine? In silence. Just being there with a friend. And so we know though that because Job was a man of God, right? He had manifested these kinds of friendships and energy around himself. And right, remember, he has the sustenance from on high. So the Lord knew that these friends 
were so, so crucial for him to be supported during this time. Then we continue, Dr. diaz Cruz says, however, at missed trials, pains, or weak use of free will, the wise presence of the Lord's messengers maintain serenity in one's heart. This serenity comes from the spiritual company in higher spheres, encouraging and watching over us without end, right? So we are encouraged, we are watched, we are taken care of. Because of those things, friends, we are can connect that to a sense of serenity, right? And so serenity can have many variations because what serenity might mean for me, it could possibly be different for you, right? So I, I love that that's a, a creative way of, of really in adapting ourselves to that serenity. But it is not a materialistic serenity. That is one thing. It is an internal serenity. So however we've come to interpret serenity, it's important for us to remember that it's something that's inside of us, right? Our source, our core. So how did Job uh, get that support to feel and maintain that serenity? There are two instances which we, we can withdraw from the text, right? It doesn't say clear, but we can infer, right? First of all, all those conversations between Job and his friends, think about it, friends, they were Christ content, they were productive, and they were very hopeful. So just that interaction in itself was a sense of serenity. But most interestingly, friends, we can also think about Job's questionings towards God gave him a sense of serenity throughout most of these chapters as it was a dialogue between friends. We can see Job. Job had all sorts of thoughts and doubts and questions and resolutions and so forth. And God allowed that to happen because God stayed silent, right? The minute God spoke, this ended. So that means that that was Job's way of, of experiencing serenity. Right, So we are always being maintained. And that's a, a very powerful statement for us to really, truly think about. Okay, And then Dr. diaz de Cruz continues. Therefore, do not hesitate to search for synchronization with the spirits in the higher spheres through the renewal of thought and sentiments so that you may connect to the spirits by means of perfect communication of ideas and sentiments. So... In other words, friends, let's sink in to this higher sphere, right? Let's not be shy. Let's not second doubt ourselves, right? When we have a, that intuition in us, right? That's saying connect, connect. It's not coming from us. It's coming from, from God and the spirits that are putting us connect to that higher source, get into that place where you are in this renewal, right? This, I was uh, sharing with some co-workers, a lot of these external things outside of us, we have no control, but there's something we can, and that's our internal state, which we work by constantly renewing our thoughts and placing ourselves in those emanations you can say of this so this is basically what it's saying it could be through meditations it could be through prayers prayers it could be through um, all sorts of like listening to music going on walks or just doing something that connects us to again to god to that higher place right and now let's look on the other side right as we're working through our t, t chart here on the other side job 12 13 it says here to god belong wisdom and power counsel and understanding are his what he tears down cannot be rebuilt those he imprisons cannot be released if he holds back the waters they're strapped if he lets them loose they devastate the land to him belong strength and insight both deceived and deceiver are his and it continues, right? So this is Job expressing, having that moment where he realizes that everything is belongs to God, 
And he did this many times. If you notice, there are a lot of those dialogues. At the end, he had that moment of just really connecting at a higher level、um, and understanding that God has this power that holds everything together. And so, when he's respecting this, when he's admitting and surrendering himself to this power. Right, he's allowing himself to open up. I say like a flower, right? So he's opening himself like a flower, allowing God's love to come through him, even though he's going through that difficult time. And so we can say, friends, that now us, especially now, is very difficult. Right? We have so much worldwide. We have so much. And it's on us to simply connect to this Wi-Fi, right? As we we use a lot of those analogies here on Cardiac Radio, connect to this Wi-Fi, allow this power to just run through us, because it's going to really help. This is here for us, friends. Isn't that incredible? Let's think about Job, because if Job going through that difficult tribulation was able to somehow extract those words, even though I know he probably had a hard time, but he did it. That. Kept him connected, and then Doctor Diaz de Cruz、uh, ends up finishing up saying, "Remember, even when immersed in the shadow of trials and human battles, you are supported. We learn how to surrender to the universe's order, not with resistance, but with humbleness, while following the divine flow of blessings from the Father, who sustains all." So the first bullet is easy for us to remember. We are supported. So even though we may feel like nobody's watching or listening or helping us or being there for us, you know, sometimes because we are going through something very difficult, we are clouded because we're not allowing ourselves to truly see with those spiritual eyes. It's understandable. God knows that we are reminded through this text, though. Nevertheless. You are supported. I am supported. We are supported. So that's beautiful. But let's focus on this bullet number two, where it says we have to learn to surrender without resistance. How many times do we try to resist? Right? We are insisting、um, to change things our ways. Right? And and it's not a physical resistance. It's this thing inside with our head, with our thoughts that we're so insistent. We truly don't surrender. Guilty of this, friends. This is why we're learning. This is why we're here, so we can remind ourselves, right? We just let it go, and look at this beautiful thing: divine flow. Just let it go, right? Let the flow. Just let things go their way, because we are in this flow of blessings, right? That's a powerful word, blessings. I have a, a, a sweet soul, beautiful friend. Who says, "All right, this is an affirmation that changed my life. I am a blessing." Isn't that beautiful? But that word is powerful. Imagine us seeing everything as a blessing, surrendering, just going with the flow. Isn't that incredible?、Oh, this reminds me of analogy.、Um, I'm gonna super ultra mega paraphrase here, and I can't even remember. Who I heard it from? I'm sure it was Dr.、Uh, Wayne Dyer when he was describing this person who was going down,、uh, you know, like in a river, and there was this strong flow, and this person kept resisting and resisting. I mean, eventually this person tired out, right? And so the person what had to simply resist and let go, and then this person was like, oh, you know, the actual flow of this river is going to take me somewhere, right? And so that's a great analogy for us to remind ourselves about this, right? So now let's look at Job. How did Job, right,、uh, teach us this while he was going through his journey, right? Job forty fifteen says, "Look at the behemoth, right? That's I think that's a, a hippopotamus or something." A, An、elephant, maybe it's a big animal. So look at the behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins! What power in the muscles of its belly! Its tail sways like a cedar. The sinews of its thighs are close knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze. Its limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first 
among the works of God. A raging river does not alarm it, it is secure. The Lord blessed the latter part of Joe's life more than the formal part. Okay, so we have two things. The first thing, friends, when he's reminding, you know, when he's having this conversation with his friends, but also reminding us about that behemoth, right? It was so powerful. And that behemoth did not even try. Like he wasn't there, you know, in his place. Like, look at me. I'm the behemoth. I'm this big species, you know, and I'm at a higher level, of, you know, of the ladder. No, he knew his habitat. He knew where he belonged. And he was very confident, right? Because he had this trust knowing he will be supported in his place in nature. Right? Kind of like reminding us of us as well, that we're always supported. And and he and to go with the flow, right? But interestingly, as we all know, Joe's story, he got blessed twice as much, twice, twice as much, maybe even not, right? These are all ways for us to understand in our language, because imagine, I think if I were to really put myself into Job's being, I mean, can you imagine what he must have felt being in this situation, everything taken away from him, and then finally coming back and, and, and getting everything back twice as much, that feeling inside. There are no words to say that. But how many times have we felt that? Have we experienced that? Well, friends, we can continue experiencing many more times as long as we remind ourselves that this is there for us and let's and let's include God in everything. Let's, even the good times, it's so easy, right? But it's those tough times where we, sometimes we tend to struggle. So that's the time where we really are tested. And that's the time where we really have actually God holding our hand the, the hardest. Believe it or not, friends, it's just on us to really feel and let that love flow. So what would be this week some of the, I want to say the prescriptions, but some of the exercises, right, for our spiritual soul. One of the most interesting things that Dr. Diaz de Cruz is reminding us is to have constructive conversations with friends when discussing the ups and downs, right? As we noticed through Job, the discussions were were constructive, right? So there, it was not about the, it was, we were intentional. Right? So let's have some of those conversations throughout the week. We are having so much going on right now with everything, friends, right? So let's be constructive. Let's be wise. Let's choose carefully. What are we trying to truly, truly create around us, right? The next thing is let's be a friend. What a beautiful thing. Whatever friend means to you, let's be a friend. Let's listen to others. Let's be with them. Let's not judge. Let's not go and point fingers, right? Let's be like Job's friends where they sat with him seven days and seven nights in silence, just feeling. Sometimes that's what it calls for, right? So let's be a friend. And of course, let's work on our gospel at home so that we can continue a praying and creating a place, a sanctuary for the higher spirits to be always around us, friends. So that was a beautiful lesson. So let's always remember that we are taken care of, that we are children of God, and we will always have sustenance on high. Thank you, friends. All right, friends, we are going to sing uh, Lean On Me. It's a beautiful song, right? Talking about friendships. But first, of course, the first person is, is God, right? We can lean on Him. We also have Jesus and the spirits. They're always there for us to support us. You know what's so beautiful? To have these amazing relationships and friendships in our lives. It's another way of sustenance from on high. So let's listen to the beautiful words. Sing along if you know it. And I want to dedicate this song to all your beautiful Kardec Radio friends. Thank you so much for being here. And we are here for each other to lean on each other with God's love. So in our lives we all have
all on Jesus. We can always lean on Him, God, the spirits, and our friends. What a beautiful song. All right, let's say our prayer, friends. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful lesson. Thank you for this boost, for these reminders. We are not alone. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love, for your presence. Thank you for everything. Thank you for providing everything in advance. Thank you for the clarity today in hopes that we took messages that will be soothing to our soul. We ask for anyone who is out there needing a message. We are already thanking you in advance because we know that they also will receive their soothing message for their soul. Asking for this planet, for safety, protection, health, just overall positive vibes. We know you are watching and supporting us. And please, dear Lord, protect us as we are entering the weekend very soon. Asking that you are with us, guiding us for this amazing Kardec radio that's continuously helping us to really nourish our souls. Thank you. We ask the spirits and God and all to permission to end this uh, this meeting. And thank you so much. So be it. have someone there friends and tune in to all the amazing programs that Cardiac Radio has. God bless you. Bye.